Alright guys, so now I want to tell you about some really important stuff that is really often overlooked and this thing is going to make your melodies way, way more interesting. What's going on with you guys? It's your boy Charlie Moncler once again in the building. You already know what's going on, we back at it. So guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make really unique vintage samples just like Q-Beats, Palas, like Frank Jukes, guys like that. And I'm gonna do all that in five very simple steps. So guys, make sure you like the video and you subscribe to the channel because it really helps me a lot. And one more thing guys make sure uh, to stay to the end of this video because i got a little surprise for you guys then uh you're not gonna regret it so let's just get on with it this video is going to be divided up into five parts we're gonna go over sound selection the music theory behind the samples the rhythm of your melody the effects that i put on the sample uh and finally the arrangement so once again let's get into it so this is what we're going to be working on today guys The first thing we're going to discuss is obviously sound selection. So guys, as you can see guys, most of my sounds come from Omnisphere. It's probably the best uh, VST for those kinds of samples out there. All right, so for the main melody, I chose this part from Omnisphere uh, and it's really dope. It's sounding really ambient. And also if you guys want to do a real uh, Qubit sample, you cannot forget about the guitar. When it comes to guitars, you gotta go for something uh, also really ambient and something uh, quite realistic. And for the bass, I also went ahead into Omnisphere uh, and chose this preset. Alright, so when it comes to bass, you want to choose something uh, quite deep with not a lot of harmonics, with not a lot of this distortion. For the bass not to interfere, not to overwhelm uh, the, the melody itself, it's really important. So as you can hear, it's not that distorted, but you'll also be able to hear it on uh, headphone speakers. So. And for the flute, I went ahead into contact uh, into this library um, and chose this preset. As you can hear guys, it's really ambient, it's really dope, uh, it's really real sounding and uh, that is exactly what you want from a flute in a qubit sample. You guys really can't go wrong uh, with contact when it comes to flutes. Alright guys, now we are going to the second step and that's going to be music theory uh, behind this sample. So the first thing I did in this project is uh, going into this pad uh, and I played this melody. So we're gonna hear with a lot of Qubit samples, with a lot of Paras samples, that uh, the melodies are not that complicated. What I mean by that is that a lot of them have only two chords, and those chords most times are uh, the fourth chord uh, of the minor scale. So I'm actually right now in D minor. So the fourth chord is gonna be G minor. And the second chord, so the first chord in the scale, uh, is going to be obviously uh, the D minor chord. You can never go wrong with those two chords when it comes to qubit samples, so that is exactly what I used. So guys, after clicking in this 8 bar loop, uh, I duplicated all the chords to make a longer loop, so it's gonna be 16 uh, bars right now. So basically what I did is I added some top notes, um, F and E, F and E, really repetitive. And what I also did is I changed up this last chord. And so this chord comes from the minor harmonic scale, a C sharp diminished chord. As you can tell, this adds a little bit of tension to the melody and it makes it uh, a little bit more interesting. And this is how you create this chord. So uh, you take your note, you make a minor uh, third uh, interval. Uh, so it goes up three semitones, up to E. Uh, and then you do the same thing, uh, minor third uh, up to G. So basically, guys, what this chord is, is a minor chord with a diminished fifth. As far as the guitars go, uh, I just copied over the same exact chords and basically arpeggiated them. So 
for example, guys, I put in the uh, G minor chord, just like this. Uh, I put the third up an octave and then just uh, arpeggiated it. All right, guys, as for the bass, uh, you just gotta stick to the bass notes of your chords. Uh, so in my case, it was G, then D. In the second part of the loop, I played around with different notes uh, that were still inside the scale, but were not necessarily the root notes of the chords. Uh, and it sounded like this. just to make the melody just a little bit more interesting, you know what I'm saying? So when I was doing the flute, I basically uh, kind of freestyled on my keyboard uh, and came up with this pattern. What Palace and Cubies do really often uh, with their flutes uh, is they, they put really short notes uh, before a long note just to make the flute mel melody uh, a little bit more realistic because that's how a real flute sounds like. And the same here. It sounds really dope to me. As always guys, I changed some things up in the second part. Uh, so I made some of the notes shorter, changed some of the notes. So now I want to tell you about some really important stuff uh, that is really often overlooked and this thing is going to make your melodies way, way more interesting. And this thing is the rhythm of your melody. So uh, as you can hear, for example, when it comes to my guitar, this rhythm is not exactly on grid. If it was, it would sound like this. Moving one note, uh, one step to the right or one step to the left uh, is going to make a real, really big difference. Alright boys, now I want to tell you something about the effects that I put on the melody. When it comes to mixing, guys, you have to make sure uh, you understand that uh, you have to, to separate the different parts of your sample in order for those different parts uh, to stand out, to stand out in the mix. What I mean by that, guys, is when I have two sounds that occupy the same uh, range of frequencies, for example, uh, this guitar, uh, and this pad. As you can see guys, those uh, sounds are very, very similar in the frequency response. What I do to those kind of sounds is I just pan them uh, right and left. So for example, this pad is panned a little bit to the right and this one is panned to the left. And actually Palace or uh, Q-Beats uh, do it a lot, so uh, that's a gem right there. In order to separate the sounds even more, uh, you can, for example, lower the volume of one and uh, bring the other one up. So for example, guys, uh, in comparison to the guitar, the flute is really loud, as you can hear. And I did that because I really wanted uh, the flute to stand out over the guitar, uh, because its uh, its melody is a lot more interesting, and uh, that's the second thing you can do. And when it comes to the actual effects that I put on the uh, on each parts of the melody, so first of all, I put some reverb on the sample. And that's the effect that gave it this uh, really ambient characteristic, and it's probably the most important effect. I distorted it a little bit, uh, and then once again, even more reverb. And some well control for this detune. Then I cut out all the low end and made a dip uh, around 500 Hz uh, region, just to remove some of the harshness of this uh, of this frequency, as you can hear. It's really harsh. And the parametric, as usual. When it comes to guitars, I really like to compress them uh, using this uh, vintage valve compressor. Uh, it really gives guitars uh, a little bit of character. Uh, 
and then I put a flanger on the guitar. Uh, it's a really good effect for, for guitars. Just detunes it a little bit at the standard EQ. For the flute, I just wanted to make it a little bit more ambient, as you can see. I cut some of the high end uh, from this flute because it was, it was quite harsh. Obviously compressed it. And now the last part of the sample, so the bass. I've got obviously my favorite uh, bit crusher plugin or distortion plugin, I guess. Camo Crusher, it's free. Go grab it right now. I just distorted it a little bit with a tube distortion. Uh, yeah, compressed it. Some parametric EQ to boost the low end, cut some of the high end because I didn't want it to be that distorted uh, as I mentioned before. All right guys, that's it for the mixing. Now comes the arrangement part of the sample. And guys, when it comes to arrangement, it's really self-explanatory. You just want a simple melody playing um, in the beginning and then uh, more elements are introduced. So I introduce, introduce this patch and this uh, bass uh, in the 17th bar. on, it gets more complicated, and lastly the flute, the final part. Alright guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure, like for real guys, make sure you're subscribed, uh, make sure uh, you like the, uh, the YouTube video, and make sure you hit that bell icon, that really helps guys with the channel, so uh, go ahead and do that and if you watch the end uh, i've got a little surprise for you so you can download the sample for free in the description you just have to subscribe to me and with that being said guys uh see you in the next video